Hey you guys, welcome back, Flint Pilot here, and I'm super excited to introduce a new video, or rather a series of new videos. They will be devoted to vocabulary building. I know guys, you've been asking for some fresh content, so here it comes. Okay, a few opening remarks before we start. What is this vocabulary building series about? I've selected a bunch of domains or clusters of aviation-related vocabulary and drafted video presentations for them accordingly. Now, in each of the episodes, we will be covering a portion of vocabulary and look into some examples. I want these presentations to focus on verbs in the first place and maybe some cool adjectives too, but mainly verbs. I'm sure you guys know what radium is, or what ailerons are, and the rest of the terminology that exists out there in the world of aviation. But the verbs are the ones that help us nicely tie ideas together. And the lack of verbs, for what I sense, is the problem that most of my students have. So the main purpose here is to not only guide you through some essential vocabulary, which you obviously need for your ICAO language proficiency certificate, but also encourage you to grow the word bank that you use. Hopefully brush up on some new phrases and expressions and make this whole vocabulary building process less burdensome. Okay, let's dive in. Our first vocabulary cluster will be related to suspended flight operations or suspended airport operations. It's a huge topic indeed, which certainly includes numerous subdomains. At an interview, you might be offered to talk on what kind of situation that is and on the reasons and consequences, obviously. So let's see what vocab we may need here. The word suspended means that an airport has shut down or stopped its landing and takeoff operations for a period of time or temporarily. You can use verbs to seize or to put on hold or halt if to shut down or to stop sound too simple to you. For example, flight operations in the country's main airport were halted on Friday due to weather. Or, the airport had to cease all passenger flight operations in and out of the country until further notice. An nice alternative to suspended here is disrupted or just interrupted operations. For example, there are various reasons which can disrupt flight operations in the airport. Okay? If the situation with suspension continues, we can say the airport remained closed, say for hours, or use verbs like to extend or to prolong suspension. When things get back to normal, we can use to reopen, to resume operations, or to recover from a disruption. As in, the airport authorities prolonged suspension of flights by 12 more hours, or extended the decision to suspend flights. Operations won't be resumed until next morning. The first logical link regarding this wider topic is that you need to be able to talk about the consequences of disrupted airport operations. A question at an interview may sound something like, what suspended flight operations may lead to? So obviously, the flight delays, cancellations, diversions, and groundings, of course. The airport or airlines may ground airplanes or flights, due to whatever reason. Let's add a few adjectives. For example, numerous, or massive, large-scale, or unexpected, continuous, non-stop, ongoing, etc. For example, unexpected flight delays and cancellations stress out absolutely everyone, from first-time flyers to seasoned travelers. Now, as we are through with describing the problem and the consequences, let's talk about the reasons for suspended airport operations. The first being a blocked runway. Now, it can be blocked due to an incident or an accident, or by an aircraft with a technical failure, and the one which is unable to vacate the runway under its own power, or following an abnormal or an emergency or a crash landing. I guess one of the most common incidents leading to a blocked runway is the runway excursion, so let's make sure you have the required vocabulary to describe it. We can't say the aircraft overran the runway or departed, or exited the paved surface, 
or tarmac, or failed to stay, or to decelerate, or failed to stop within the designated runway. If the aircraft maneuvered sideways, and you want to emphasize that, you can say it skidded off the runway, or slid off the runway, or veered off the runway. A passenger airplane skidded off the runway, temporarily shutting down the airport. Reason 2. Technical issues, meaning problems with or faults of aerodrome, airfield, or ground equipment, or radio and navigation systems. Of course, they can be numerous. What is the general vocabulary that we use to describe technical problems? There might be an equipment failure, or it might fail. There might occur an outage, for example, approach lights or power went out. There might take place an ILS beam anomaly. Particularly, localizer or glide slope signal might get lost, causing erroneous indications or fluctuations, for instance. By the way, the latter may be momentary or steady or excessive. The equipment may simply be unserviceable or out of operation or out of order or be inoperative. For example, a technical fault in the flight data system of the air traffic service resulted in a widespread disruption at several airports around the country. The next big thing is obviously adverse or poor weather and geology or natural disasters. I'm sure you are familiar with this vocab. Let's just go through it real quick. So heavy, thick or dense fog, rain, snow, icing conditions, reduced or degraded visibility, then weather phenomena like thunderstorms, tornadoes, flooding, strong or gusty winds, and microbursts, and earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions or volcanic ash clouds for geology-related issues. Now, what is really important here is the verbs to hit or to impact, to strike, to affect, or to suffer can help us out here. For example, the airfield was struck by a tornado causing severe damage to the infrastructure. Or, the airfield suffered major flooding during a storm. Now, in order to handle the nasty weather, airport might shut down its operation or runway treatment as the runway may get contaminated or get covered with contaminants, like snow, slush, and ice. You may also want to describe it with snow removal or slush removal, or use to clear snow off the runway, or to conduct or to run snow removal, or just say that the snow removal or runway treatment is in progress. We can get more detailed and say that the ground services are plowing the snow, or applying de-icing agent, or spraying it, or dispensing it, or treating the runway surface with a de-icing agent. Or be more specific about the equipment, like the ground services are sending out the blowers, brooms, a friction tester, or a runway inspection vehicle. For example, one of the runways is closed for snow plowing, so the airplanes have shifted to an alternate runway for takeoff and landing. Or, after snow removal, runway inspection was initiated to make sure no parts of trucks were left on the runway or any of the landing lights were damaged. Now moving on to security related issues like terrorist attacks, rioting, civil or social unrest, spread of viral infections, let's consider it also to be a security issue, security breaches like bypassing security checkpoints and accessing restricted areas, or security alerts in general. Let's have a look at more examples. The airport briefly suspended all operations after a report of a security alert on one of the inbound flights, or a recent breach of security at the airport involved a teenage stowaway who snuck onto the airfield and hid in the wheel well. Now there is of course a bunch of other reasons which might disrupt airport operations. They are less common, but let's name them anyway. Operations may get suspended due to a curfew, which is basically a flight restriction that is active during a period of time during the day, or rather the night. You might want to use verbs like to impose, or to introduce, or to enact, 
or simply be in place or be in force when you are talking about measures like curfew or restrictions. A strict nighttime curfew is in place at the airport. A ban on flights has been enforced for two weeks now. Or, in response to complaints about noise, local authorities enacted a curfew and imposed a limit on the number of airplanes that could be based in the airport. Now, airport operations may get affected by major events like the Olympic Games or football championship or national holidays like Christmas, for instance, when the airport fails to handle an increased passenger traffic. Then go VIP flights or the ones carrying heads of states and government officials. Another good example is an air show or demonstration flights. Let's take a look at the examples. The airport will partially suspend its commercial flight operations during next week for the coming air show. Or, the presidential jetliner did not leave on time, causing numerous delays and diversions. For the sake of an English proficiency test, let's also cover strikes involving ADC or airline or airport staff, or so-called sit-ins. As in, flights were disrupted as hundreds of baggage handlers, check-in staff and cargo crew at the airport were set to strike over the weekend. Or, political protesters are holding a sit-in in the airport threatening to disrupt operations. Finally, construction works. The airport might get busy resurfacing or recarpeting the maneuvering area, or conducting runway extension works, or perhaps terminal reconstruction, as in the airport is taking steps to minimize disruptions to flight operations during the runway resurfacing. All right, there is no more space left on the screen, and that seems like a big portion of information, so let's take a break here. In the next video of the vocabulary building series, we will dive into the domain called interactions. So stay tuned and subscribe if you still haven't. Hope you had fun. See you in the next video. Bye.